Welcome to your fourth tutorial on API documentation using YAML. In this tutorial, we'll go further down to improve our documentation. Now, we are going to start our documentation from schemes. You can edit all this by yourself and add your own descriptions. Now, what we have here is scheme. If your website is .http or .https, if your website is .https, you have to indicate it. So this scheme is an array, and to list multiple arrays in YAML, you will use this hyphen and then type .https. So if your API accepts .http and .https, this is where to list it .https. So if we now drop down, users are users can now see that we accept two schemes, HTTP and HTTPS, right? But if not, we can just leave it at that. For us, at localhost, we accept only HTTP. Now the first thing we're going to check is the first endpoint. Remember that our endpoints step from API v1 slash. So we're going to say slash users. And we're going to the first one we're going to check out is index. So this is slash users slash index. And index accepts a get request. I hope you remember that for my API here, index accepts a get request and we did slash users slash index and that's a get request. So if we get back here. We'll have get then tag so we're just going to put a tag the tag is this bold stuff that you see here so i'm just going to put the tag to users so for each endpoint this is an endpoint that we're defining for each endpoint you define once you add users to it anywhere in the document it will line itself up on the users as you can see in the documentation there's a resource the tag is the resource it has several endpoints. All right, so let us continue. So we're going to put a summary of users index. So it gives us a list of our users. So get a list of all users. We don't need everything here, description. We can put further description. We can just uh, write more details, we can say this endpoint uses a get request to accept retrieve all users. And we can determine what our API consumes, whether it consumes XML and JSON. The default is JSON. For us, we don't need XML and we don't need XML. So what our endpoint, when a user visits it, what it outputs is JSON because if we check our code in users controller and we check for index, we see that the it outputs JSON, so we're going to indicate it in our documentation that we output JSON, but we don't consume anything. The user just has to visit the endpoint. So we we'll let us remove consumes, and we we'll have only application JSON. Then the parameters. This the parameters describe what you would have to send alongside this. So sometimes somebody fills a form and they're sending it via push request. So these are the parameters that is expected. For instance, when we want to view a user here in our endpoint in web, in our endpoint to view a user, you have to pass the ID as a parameter. So in this case, when you want to get a list of users, there is nothing to pass up as a parameter. So we're going to delete the parameter field. And that is perfectly normal. So we delete everything about parameters there is nothing to pass for this one the response okay invalid inputs 
and um, the security so we are not we don't have anything to do with security delete that and that solves our problem for this so if you observe you will see some lines vertical lines so make sure that your lines are vertically arranged properly as you can observe they are listing the HTTP verbs we don't need all this so we will delete everything we are not sending put request to our index so we will delete it and there we are we have another endpoint so always make sure that your endpoints are on the same vertical line YAML deals with spaces so we've had our index and when we click on it let me pan it to the right when we click on it you will see that a user can see the description see the endpoint they have to follow and there is no parameter they have to send to see the list of users and the response type is JSON as we've specified and this is the possible error they can get so you can right here list all possible errors okay now if the user wants to test out this API you can hit on try it out and hit on execute so when they hit on execute as you can see it shows us that it sends a call request and this is the response it got so as you can see in the response the user can now see here the list of users just like we saw on our postman here's our postman the list of users that we returned and that is what we have here isn't this beautiful that your users can test your api right from the documentation and now if you look slightly above the response we're supposed to see a model here but we didn't define a model for this so in the next api pets we'll try and define a model so we'll change this to posts so we have posts and um, or let's say users let's define another endpoint so we have users and we have view and users view is also they have to view an ID so we're expecting them to enter users view and the specific ID of a user and it's a get request and the tag is users you remember why the tag is users so that it will add them to the same resource as you can see users users or it must be the same spelling so this indicates the tags indicate the resource so what we're creating as you can see automatically is added under the user's resource so I'll minimize it by clicking here so we now have two endpoints on user's resource because we just added the tag so we'll add the summary and the description remember you can delete anyone at any point view a user so we can say this end point end point displays user details of a user's detail whatever we don't need operation id it's not used for anything of course we produce only JSON, but we can allow our users to get XML. We have parameters. The only parameter that the user is supposed to enter for us is the ID. Remember, the parameters is an array. So for each field, you have to describe a lot of things. For each field, like I described in this image, so these are parameters. So you have to describe that the parameter that is that you're expecting is id if you're expecting another parameter you have to describe it again 
So for a use for a consumer to view our user, we just need one parameter, which is the ID. So the ID, we can just call it, oops, the name of the parameter is ID. And it's in query, and we can describe it and say this is the unique identifier of the user. This is the unique identifier of the user. Don't mind the lag, because like I told you, it's converting it to JSON in order to convert it to XML, uh, HTML. So you can expect little lag. Is it required? Yes, it's true. It's required. And then it's not an array. The type is integer. Because an ID, we're expecting an integer. The item string, we don't need all this. So we will. And um, collection format, we'll delete collection format and items, we don't need them. And there we are, good, successful operation type. We don't need schema. All right, so I want us to describe a schema so you understand what schema is. Remember that I told you what a model is. A model makes reference to the kind of response the consumer should expect. So in the schema, the model is of type array and the items is referenced here. So let us say that we're referencing it in users. Remember, every resource will just have one model. So we have to go to the bottom of the document to define, under definitions, to define a user's model. But before then, let us quickly run through to make sure that every item is okay. Security, we don't need security, we just delete it. We delete security. So we have to go down to define a user's model. But before then, let us look here. As you can see, when we click on model, it's not showing us the model. If we click on model, of course, we don't have anything because we've not defined it. So if we scroll down, keep your eyes on the right, we're going to find definitions. And then there are so many endpoints here, dummy endpoints. In your case, you have to delete all these dummy endpoints. And um, after creating yours, so I'll just pan to the right a little. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Oops, this is the bottom. We'll scroll up slowly. We are looking for definitions. Here is it. So we have definitions. And as you can see, under definitions, you have order. Order was defined and category was defined and so on. So we are going to duplicate one of them, then use it to define users. That's okay. I've copied it on my keyboard, which is basically right click, copy. So scroll, paste. Be mindful of the line. It must start at the line. So when I paste, I have to go back and check that it started at the line. As you can see, order did not start at the line. So I'll hit tab on my keyboard or space bar to move it to one line. Now it is on the same line with this other guy here, which means we can now define it. It's an object, it has an ID of integer type, then that's a user's model. We have to go to Postman to check our user's model. As you can see, our user's model has an ID of integer, has a name, an email. So let's go back. So we have a name, the name is a string, and we don't need to specify this format. All these formats are not compulsory. Then the quantity, we don't have the quantity, we have email. So I'll delete email, it's a string too, we don't need format. And if we go back to Postman. We have created that and updated that. So we type created that. Created underscore at. It's called this time. And we don't need format. Then we repeat the same thing for updated that. Copy, paste. I've updated that. Updated. 
then all the status and everything complete boolean we just delete them we don't need them we delete the xml so this basically under definitions okay we're going to name it users so under definitions users we have an object and as you can see if we come to a user's resource all if we come to a user's resource the second one has a definition of model and if you come to the model and here is the sample model so a user viewing our documentation can see what to expect and that is very beautiful very very beautiful so in your own case you have to delete all these other dummy definitions and of course for any definition you delete you have to come and delete a reference to it you scroll up for each time it is referenced you have to delete it so this is how to write your api using yaml I admit it's a very tedious task, but it is not difficult. It just takes a little time and you get everything right. Alright, see you in the next tutorial where we will look into other things. And of course, you will constantly have errors like this. You click on it, it takes you to the line where you figure out the error. All right, in the next tutorial, we'll sort this error out. Thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial. Before we round up, we can just quickly sort out this error. And then for the rest of the two of them, when we move over to our local machine, our local version of Swagger Editor, we can sort them out. So for this one, it's saying declare path parameter ID needs to be defined as a path parameter and at either the path or portion level so we have a path parameter id and we de we've defined it here as a required id but we did not specify that it's actually a path and when we do this this error should disappear as you can see it's gone remaining these two and we sort it out when we move to our local machine and then something else I would like you to know is that there is a place where all these things are specified. It is called the Swagger Open API Specification. If you go to Google and type Swagger Open API Specification, you will get a result that will take you to, as you can see, the first result is in GitHub. When you click on it, takes you to this page on github where you have open api specification and the current version as at the time of making this video is 2.0 and 3.0 is almost already out so you are supposed to read through these documents or basically glance through these documents but i'll show you the important types the important places you have to check is the data types where you have these different data types and the formats as you can see at the bottom of this document we were sp specifying different data types in the definitions aspect all these types so you have them offhand type string so this is where they are all specified and their formats if you scroll down you'll see other things that are very important that you should know so you can glance through it at your own private time and understand what the open api standard documentation specification is by swagger so see you in the next tutorial